Hello and welcome to another episode of my Working with Apple series. My name is Carl Pauline and this week it's all about iOS 14 and in particular I'm going to focus on Apple's reminders. Now we'll look at Apple Notes next time but in this episode what I want to do is just show you Apple Reminders, how to get the Time Sector system working in Apple Reminders because it is actually a really solid task manager now and with just a few little cosmetic changes that Apple have been playing around with in this new update which gives us a little bit more space we have a much better way of adding dates and so on so I thought I would show you this on my iPad because I saw on the iPad version of reminders there seems to be a bigger update now this obviously anything that's working on the iPad is going to work on the iPhone as well so if you're using the iPhone this is going to work exactly the same way so you're not missing out on anything but the the bigger real estate of the screen just helps me to demonstrate the new reminders. Now before we go any further I would just like to say if you do get any value from this episode then please help me by clicking on that like button below and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet then and you want to get all the latest tips tricks and news on Apple's productivity apps then please subscribe to my channel. Okay let me take you into my Apple reminders using iPad OS 14 and show you some of the new changes. Okay, so as Apple have not updated the Mac OS to Big Sur yet, and we don't know when that's coming, probably in another month or two's time, but what I can do is I can show you the new reminders on my iPad, which is using iOS 14 for iPad. So what have we got that's different? Well, there's been a few little UI changes. You can see there's a bit more space now in between the 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 smart folders and your lists but let's just go into the edit what can you do with the list now one of the criticisms i remember people saying is that you couldn't edit the smart folders you couldn't turn them on now you still can't create your own but now you can turn them on and off so for example i've never needed to see all my tasks i just don't want to see them so i can now remove that now when I remove that, that creates just three. I don't have four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my today one down here. There's a reason for that. I'll show you that in a second. The other thing that I wanted to show you is in the past when we created these groups, they would just sink to the bottom. So it wasn't always a really good way. But now you can actually move groups around. They can move, you can move them anywhere you want. And obviously with if you're using the time sector system, we have a this week folder and we have a recurring areas of folder. And I like to group those together. It's I mean doesn't it's not really that important, but I just just in my habit is just to have them grouped together because my recurring areas of focus is an area that I want to be watching on a daily basis because these are my areas of focus. These are the most important tasks in terms of my own life, my own goals and the things that are truly important to me. So those are the things. Now, as I said, with the smart folders now, I've got this big, long dashboard view or whatever you want to uh, tab here for my today so I can just tap on that and bang that's going to come in as you can see my recurring areas of focus now one of the things that you can do if I tap on that you'll see down here now we have a number of options so all I need to do is I can tap that and I get the flag and as these are recurring areas of focus I'm going to tap that I'm going to get a flag so down at the bottom now you can add flags you can also do it of course from the in information button there like we did before so now what I've got is I've got two items flagged and these are my areas of focus and they're in now of course if you're actually doing the your flagged items like for events or tasks that you've got for next week or next month they're also going to show in this smart filter so what I would say is as long as you're doing your daily planning that is the time that you would do your flagging so that you're only seeing the flagged items at the top. It's a great way of knowing what your most important tasks for the day are. Now, if you're one of those people who are very bad and don't do their daily planning, then of course, if you flag everything or flag everything that's going to be due next month or this month or next week, you know, that list is not really going to be that helpful to you. So that's just something to keep in mind. I would use your daily planning session to actually flag the items that you want to do tomorrow. Okay, moving 
on, let's go into my inbox and show you what some of the things that you can do. So as I mentioned, you can add flags now from the bottom menu. You don't have to go into the information bar. But let's say we've got call John about next week's webinar. Now, I can add a date by just coming down here. I can add a location. Uh, there's a, and I can add a, an image immediately there. But actually, this is going to be, I'm going to do this next Monday. So I'm just going to drag this. So uh, what I will do is I will just drag this down to next week. I don't need to worry about that until next week. I'm going to do it on Monday. And I do a weekly planning session on Sunday. So I don't need to look at that now. Check hotel directions again. I don't need to do that until next week. So I'm just going to drag that down to next week. Get house listings. Again, that's not something I need to do this week. So I'm going to drop it into next week. And by the way, this is show you just how fast the time sector system is. Buy more coffee. Now that's something I probably need to do today. So I'm just going to hit the calendar down here on the bottom left. Hit that and it's got this wonderful, so I can just tap today. That's great, that's done. I think that's really important, so I'm gonna add the flag to that. I'm gonna just add the flag to that, there we go. And I can now drag this task, no I can't, uh, because I'm, let me drag this task into this week. And review Evernote's iOS update. Yep, definitely I want to do that today because that's just came out overnight. So I'm gonna click that today, there we go. And I'm gonna drag that into this week. Again, drag that into this week. Thank you. It's not going to let me do it. There we go. Drag it into this week. I've dragged two in there, didn't I? Ah, reviewing Evernote. Yes, I'm doing that one. And I've got one more task. Sort out car rental. Again, I'm going to do that next month, uh, next week, so I don't need to worry about that. Drag that in there. And that's essentially how I would manage my reminders app the new Reminders app. What I really, really like most of all, though, is that now I don't have to go into the information bar, although this does give you a lot more options if you wish. You can add your notes in here. You can add a URL in there. And, of course, you can add an image. So, But you can do that from down here. If you can see, uh, if I tap on that here, I can add an image from my camera. I can take a picture or get uh, from my camera menu. So there are ways of doing this. Now, one of the things that a lot of people have asked me through videos that I've done on Reminders before is how do you get email into Reminders? Well, this is an interesting one. I played around with this for a while. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag up here. Let's go into my email. And what we're going to do is let me just go into the all my inboxes. There we go. We're going to all my inboxes. Let's take this one here. So I've got this message from Todoist, which tells me that they're not going to be available for 30 minutes on September the 19th. Now, as you can see, there's no share button up here. There's no you can't go access this to the share sheet. So what I can do, though, is I can highlight that and then tap on it and hit share. And that will give me the option to share this to my reminder. So if I tap on that, and I can then add that to my to do is uh, to my reminders inbox. And there are a couple of other things that I notice. Like down here, if I tap on this, so oops, I didn't want to go into Twitter. Let's just uh, go back out of that. I did not want to go into Twitter. Let's go back to mail. So if I do this, I'm going to do this by hand because it's just going to be so much easier. <laughs> Uh, so if I tap on it like that, I can now hit the share button like that. Again, I get the reminders and I can add that to my to-do list. So that's something that you can do. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my reminders now. And as you will go into the inbox and now you'll see that what I've got here is, first of all, I've got my the original email where I copied the text. What I can do is I can now tap on this button here. And it's going to take me straight back to the actual original email. So all you need to do is copy some text from the email that you want to put into your inbox. And then you get this, this nice little button here, which will take you directly back to the actual mail. And for the one that you've done, that like I did where there was a link in that email, I can now tap on that and it will open up twitter.com on Safari, and that will give me that particular task. So there are some ways of sharing stuff with you. Now, there is something else that I want to show you, which is really good. I'm just going to drag my notes up, up into the side here. And let's say that I want to put in uh, a note that I collected. So 
uh, what I'm going to do is let's just say I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag this into there. Now, this is actually an email, but I've dragged it into there. Now, originally it comes from my notes. So if I just take my notes out like that, saying reminders, all I have to do now is tap on that and it will take me directly to the note. So you can link your notes to your reminders really very easily just using the drag and drop. So there's some really cool features. Now, some of these features I know were in the previous version, but they've just got a little bit better, a little bit smoother, and you've just got a few more options that you can use within reminders. I think this is a really good update. It's more solid. It looks fantastic, and I can't wait to see it on Big Sur because I don't think it's a particularly good app on the Mac, but it's certainly a very, very good app on the iPad and indeed on the iPhone. So there you go. If you're using the Time Sector system and you want to use Apple Reminders, because of course, if Apple are doing it, they control the hardware and the software, you know it's not going to disappear. You know it's not going to get bought by another company. So you know that you've got a very solid to-do list manager. And Reminders really is a very solid to-do list manager. There you go. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode. And it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Hello, thank you very much for watching my videos. Now I have something exciting to tell you about. Recently I have developed a brand new time management system. It's a system designed to manage your time in the 21st century. The world has changed a lot over the last 20 years. In fact, it's actually changed a lot this year. And what we need now is a system, a time management system that is very easy to use easy to maintain so that you can spend more of your time doing the work and that's what the time sector system is all about it's going to change your whole belief system about way the way a time management system should work because this focuses on when when you are going to do the task and let's be honest it doesn't matter how motivated inspired or how urgent something is if you don't have time to do it it is never going to get done and that's what this system is built around, getting your work done. So you can spend more of your time doing the things that you want to do. I hope you join me in this course. The full details of the course are in the show notes below. So please join me and thank you very much for watching this brief video.